Welcome back folks. Today we're going to be reviewing the Bring Arts Luminary figure from Dragon Quest XI. I got this figure a little while back, but uh, we're going to finally take a quick look at it. I haven't had a chance to open it yet. This figure is from Square Enix themselves. It's a scale action figure of the Luminary, the main character of Dragon Quest XI, and it has a lot of accessories. You can get this on Amazon, a lot of different websites like Play Asia, I think, as well as the Square Enix store. So. We'll uh, dive right into this. So first of all, looking at the box, you can see right in the front, Bring Arts. It has a very nice open window display, so you can see everything. Looks pretty good, actually, up front. So there's a Luminary, his uh, shield and swords. He has a sword sheath as well. And... There is uh, Bring Arts action figure. And this is the Luminary up top. So here's a side. This is the Luminary. And it has his uh, coat of arms as well. And there's a few photos of the figure in action on the back of the box. And on the side, looks the same. So let's get this thing open. All right, just pulling this out now. And the box has his coat of arms in the back like a brick wall sort of design. It's a pretty nice looking box to be honest. So we'll set that to the side and take a quick look at the figure itself. Just uh, get this open. Alright, and here we have the Luminary figure from Bring Arts. It's a little smaller than I thought it would be. It's uh, like a six inch scale figure, it looks like. It has a lot of nice details, you can tell immediately. There's like wrinkles in the clothing, and uh, his arm bends at the elbow as well. And we'll take a closer look at that. So. The figure has articulation at the wrists, the arms as well. You can see the feet, the shoes are very well sculpted, and he has a toe joint. And let's see if he stands on his own very well. And it looks like he does. So here's the sort of light that comes with the Luminary figure. And as you can see, it looks it looks very good, actually. It looks exactly like the one from the game, and it looks uh, really detailed, very shiny kind of looking. So let's see what else it comes with. It comes with the Luminary Fish from Dragon Quest XI when the Luminary turned into a fish. It's very cute looking. Put that aside. There is a Spirit of Lost Time that has a messenger's bag, I guess, across it. And the bag is pretty much the way down, it looks like. And the bag is well sculpted. It looks nice. The messenger and... Next, there is a slime figure. And this slime is very hollow and it's kind of light. It's lighter than it looks. You'll, you'd will you be surprised. The material's kind of light, sort of. But it's a nice little slime figure as well. And it, it, it's in scale with the Luminary very well. Here we have a little rack of different hands. There's gripping hands and uh, one for the right and left. Also like an attacking sort of hand. And it has his luminary, the mark of the luminary on the left hand, just like in the game. And it's glowing on the sword wielding hand. So he has fists, an open hand, and a sword wielding hand. So here is Erdwin's shield from Dragon Quest XI. 
the Luminary Shield. It says Roto right on the top in the Nordic runes and has uh, Erdrich's emblem. This is how we connect the sword to his back. This focus in a little. It's like a buckle for his sword. And here is the iron sword as well for the luminary. And if I can get this to focus. Okay, so let's take a look at the sword sheath. This is the sheath that goes on his back because the luminary carries his first sword on his back. We have the sword and it fits very well in the handle pops off so he can fit into his hand so putting that back on the sword itself slides right out and it's a pretty good fit and I'll just show you how it fits into his hand so yeah the elbow does pop off it's a little bit fragile this figure you'll you'll notice it being a bit fragile and popping out very easily so this is his sword wielding hand and it's a kind of, there's kind of a trick to getting the sword to fit in, because it's not going to fit in just like that. You can't just put it in like that through, because, you know, the end is too large. So what you actually do is you remove the handle of the sword by popping it out like that. And you actually stick the handle itself into the hand of the luminary sword. And it's a really tight fit. It's very, very hard to kind of squeeze it in there. Like, it's really hard. <laughs> like... This is really difficult to get to him to hold a sword, honestly. it's. If, I feel like I'm gonna break the, the toy doing this. Like, I almost don't wanna do it with this sword, the, the regular iron sword. So, squeezing that in. You know what, it's really just too tight. I think I'll show you how he holds the Sword of Light instead because that iron sword honestly does not fit in his hand very well at all. I feel like you'd have to use like a hair dryer or something. So putting the iron sword back in, it's still a good looking accessory. It looks very detailed. It looks well shaded and everything. And it looks good on his back to be honest more than anything. I think I'd rather keep the iron sword on his back and have him hold the Sword of Light. I think that would be cooler. So he looks pretty cool with the sword on his back. It works. And he can stand up just fine without with the sword on his back. He balances just well and it just pops right off. So you can also use this little buckle right here that inc that's included to just slide the sword in. It's an alternative. Now the Sword of Light has a very th thick kind of shape to it. And it definitely will not fit on his back. Look, if you try, it, it just won't. See? There's no way you can get that to fit on his back. At all. However, the Sword of Light does fit in his hand very well. So let's take a look at some articulation. He has... His head rotates and it goes up slightly and it down just a little bit. There's not a lot of neck movement to be honest. His arms have, they go up about that much and they bend about that much to be honest. And they also have a bicep swivel. His wrists also have a sort of joint at them, a hinge joint. There's more mobility than you would think, and he also has an ab crunch, so he can spin his torso around at the abdominals, and he can bend inwards as well. He can bend back about that much, so you can really pose him to spin around a lot and look look around. His tunic it has a soft plastic, and it's very pliable, and it's also detailed with a lot of wrinkles, so this looks very clothy, to be honest. It looks good. And there's a lot of sort of dark paint sh shading to make it look dynamic. 
So his, his leg pops out about that much because of the tunic. You can't expect it to pop it up more. But the knee has a surprising amount of mobility. Like, look at the hinge on the knee. It's a double jointed knee hinge. So it could bend all the way back. It could be touching his uh, backside with his with his heel of his foot, which I was very surprised about, considering that he wouldn't really be doing a pose like that with these, this uh, messenger's bag. The messenger's bag actually obstructs him, the green one in the front of him. And his back leg can't really go back that far either. So it's a little bit of a missed opportunity that they gave him these really, really flexible sort of leg joints, but he can't really use them to be honest because of his tunic. But that's just how the character is designed to be honest. You could still pose, there's a lot of options to pose this character though. So his foot, his foot has a hinge joint and it could also swivel left and right. So there's a lot of mobility there. And like I said earlier, he has a toe joint, which is always nice. And you could see the shoes are very well sculpted as well. This is a little belt, it's all tied up. And it looks kind of realistic, looks pretty good. His, his outfit is probably the highlight of this figure. It looks really like leathery kind of, it looks, it looks good. I'm very pleased with that. Now his head, on the other hand, leaves a bit to be desired. His hair is not super detailed and it's kind of one color. And his face, it looks like the luminary, you know? I'm not too disappointed with that, but his hair, his hair sculpt is a bit uh, basic, to be honest, especially considering how expensive the figure is. So now we get to the Sword of Light, the ultimate weapon of the Luminary. Now the end pops up on off on this, so you can slide it over the end of the Sword of Light. That way you can slide it into his hand. And it, it fits much better than the other sword. The other sword barely, you have to squeeze that other sword in. This one just slides right on, and it's a pretty good grip. And you just pop the end back on, and... The Luminary has a very firm grip on his Sword of Light. So really, you realistically only will be able to pose him with the Sword of Light. The other sword, that is not going to fit in his hand, which is really disappointing, to be honest. But he looks great with the Sword of Light, and he balances really well. This, sword, this figure has so such good balance. I mean, look at that. He's holding the sword outwards, and he balances perfectly. Now here is Erdrich's shield, and... What's interesting is this part pops off, so you can put that right to his hand and easily apply the shield as well. And of course his arms, you know, these pegs aren't very stick, like th these pegs don't really stick to the arms that much. So that fits in very well. And you can put the shield right back on. And it looks pretty good, it looks pretty authentic. Just pop that elbow back on now. And you'll notice that the shield will pop off this thing very often, but it's not too big of a deal. It has a good fit onto there. So holding the sword and the shield, he still stands by himself. It, it's a really well-balanced figure, honestly. And everything's very detailed. The shield is detailed, his clothing, the sword of light looks amazing. It looks really good, actually. I'm very pleased with how his ac accessories and his outfit looks. The only problem I have so far is, you know, just his hair is sculpt. But overall, this really is a great figure. This is the first Dragon Quest uh, Bring Arts figure that Square Enix has put out, and they have a lot more coming up soon. So there's the Luminary. And all of his accessories that he comes with. So here he is next to a Figma of Link from Skyward Sword as a comparison. This figure is a little less than 6 inches. It's a 6 inch scale figure. And as you can see, the Luminary is about the same size, but not quite the same scale. He's a bit slimmer and taller, so the scale's a little bit weird. And you know, this sword slides into the sheath a lot better. Now, Bring Arch compared to Figma, do I think it's as good quality? I probably would say no. Like, these two figures compared to each other, I think Figma... Bring Arch is off to a good start, but Figma is still has a little bit of a leg up on him. And the scale is a... it's a little bit... It, fit, it fits well with 6-inch, but if I get another figure, this is Joker from Persona 5. This is another PS4 RPG. 
He's a lot taller. He's exactly six inches. I measured him before. And I think these two scale pretty well together considering the Joker's wearing these big heels. So the Figma wave along with the Bring Arts wave, they, they scale well together at a six inch scale. And they look pretty good together as well. I just hope that the next few Bring Arts figures will improve some of the sculpting qualities a little more and keep the limbs together because this figure is fragile as well and I feel like playing with this figure a lot or posing it very aggressively would not be a good idea. And his little friends, the you know fish luminary, the slime, and the spirit of lost time, they all look great as well. The luminary also comes with this stand, and the stand is pretty pretty good. It clamps onto his waist like that, and it has two joints, three joints actually, if you include the top one. So you could keep him elevated, doing a jumping pose with his double jointed knee, sort of an action pose. like that. And there's the luminary jumping up in the air above a slime. And overall this is a great figure, honestly. But the main question that arises is, is this figure worth the money? Is this figure worth whatever they're asking for? And they, I think the Square Enix store I was asking for 80 to $90. I, I think Honestly, not really that much. I wouldn't spend a lot of money on this. It's, it is a good figure, if I'm being honest. But it, they're asking for a lot, and it's mostly priced up because of the accessories. The fact that this Luminary figure does not have multiple faceplates, he has one faceplate, that leaves a lot to be desired. It's kind of boring that he only has one face. And the joints are a little bit loose. The the fact that one of his swords can't even fit into his hand is really disappointing. Overall, if you could get this for maybe a little bit cheaper on Amazon or some other website, I think it would be worth it for your Dragon Quest collection. In the future, they have more Bring Arts Dragon Quest figures planned. Currently, Eric and Erdrick are both available as well, but they have one of Elena coming out. They have one of Rob, Jade, Serena, and Veronica. So pretty much you could have the entire Dragon Quest XI cast in figure form, but they are asking for a lot and I wish they would improve the quality slightly more and add more interesting accessories. I don't see why we needed a Spirit of Lost Time to come with the figure when we could have had more faceplates. I would have preferred more faceplates to be honest to give the character more expressions because he does have expressions in the games. He smiles, he, you know, he frowns, he, he does uh, have more personality than people add on to. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this figure review of the Luminary, and I'll see you guys next time.